Stop diabetes and cancer at the same time with one food supplement. If you're looking for a way to help prevent both cancer and diabetes, there are good news. There's a food supplement that can actually just do that. Hello everyone, if you are looking for exclusive deals, blogs, educational content every week delivered to your email, subscribe to our newsletter at sugarmds.com right now. It's called curcumin and it's derived from the turmeric plant. Curcumin has been shown to have powerful anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties which makes it a promising candidate for helping to prevent both cancer and diabetes. Now, additionally, curcumin has been shown to help regulate blood sugar levels, making it a potential tool for managing diabetes. That's why we have it in our sugar MD advanced glucose support. No wonder, right? Extremely challenging to care for patients with diabetes, typically in everyday practice. Most doctors don't like to deal with it. Well, diabetes happens from genetic factors, poor eating habits, sedentary lifestyle, and sometimes just being old. Sorry. In all honesty, most of the time, it is a combination of all of the above. What today's medical world does is just pumping drugs to them for the rest of their lives and or altering the way in which they live their lives. They have been living for the last 50, 60 years, such as prohibiting every carb, every healthy carb, which I don't do. At this time, there is an increasing body of evidence suggesting that actually herbal supplements can assist in prevention and control of diabetes. Now, curcumin is a component of curcuma longa that possesses biological activity. That's real. It possesses a wide variety of physiological and pharmacological properties, including activities that are antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer, neuroprotective and diabetes inhibiting as a result of this the objective of this video is to explore in a precise way the effects that the curcumin have on diabetes after researching various online databases such as pubmed and embase i settled reading on around 16 studies that best fulfilled the requirements for a high quality video here i did that demanding research for you so you can sit down and relax and enjoy this beautiful video according to findings and studies curcumin has the ability to stop the both oxidative stress and inflammation which suggests that it may be able to help prevent even diabetes forget about treatment preventing it it has a significant glucose lowering effect as well especially fasting blood sugar levels hemoglobin a1c levels and even body mass index, which is obesity, right, or weight. A significant decrease in triglycerides were detected. The small LDL, the, the total LDL, increase in the HDL, C-reactive protein, they have all been related to curcumin use. It should be incorporated into any treatment plan for any diabetic, in most cases, in my opinion. For those who take sugar and advanced glucose support are already enjoying this, additional benefit of curcumin, in addition to the great reduction that they are seeing in their blood sugar. Regarding type 2 diabetes, there are still many aspects of inflammation that are unknown to us. The inflammatory process almost certainly contributes to the development of type 2 diabetes itself, and of course, it is the cause of insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is made worse when blood sugar levels are allowed to remain unchecked. Now, inflammatory biomarkers have been linked to type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance and its complications that come along with it. According to epidemiological studies, it seems likely that inflammatory biomarkers are produced in the fat tissue due to the crosstalk that occurs between fat tissue, macrophages, and other immune cells. They're just they are found mostly around the fat. This is because increased visceral fat contains increased levels of all these cell types, okay? It's not a good environment. On the other hand, oxidative stress is a significant contributor to the development of type 2 diabetes. People who suffer from type 2 diabetes have been shown in a number of studies to produce a lot of oxidative stress and they have less antioxidant capacity. High blood sugars leads to worsening of the oxidative stress causing glucose oxidation, activating protein kinase C, 
changing the eicosanoid metabolism, increasing polyol pathway, and the production of the reactive oxygen species is increased as a result of all of these factors. Now, reactive oxygen species can cause diabetes or make the condition worse, right? So, because it will directly lower the insulin secretion that you may be actually otherwise capable of. So, a lot of oxidation, a lot of DNA damage going on, producing a lot of free fatty acids, free floating, increasing the permeability of blood vessels. And as a result, formation of advanced glycation end products that makes you actually get old and makes your organs old due to oxidative stress. This function of endothelium, right, the lining of your arteries, are leading to complications related to diabetes and that can affect any blood size. It can affect your heart arteries, it can affect very tiny arteries in your eyes as well. Because of these detrimental effects of this oxidative stress and vascular complications associated with type 2 diabetes, antioxidant therapy has been thought to be a great treatment option that is not typically recommended by typical doctors. Now, the plant is curcuma longa, right? It's frequently utilized in, in the spice and the culinary arts, has been acknowledged by scientific community as well. It's typically known in Southeast Asia. Uh, it is cultivated there. It is orange tuberous color there. But people in these parts of the world have been making use of this as a natural medicine to treat a wide variety of conditions ever since the ancient times. The sole distinguishing characteristics of this plant is a compound called curcumin. It acts as an anti-inflammatory and an antioxidant. Even antibacterial, antiviral, anti-cancer, anti-diabetes. So it is very, very helpful, useful in prevention and treatment of most diseases. Now, go back to type 2 diabetic people, right? All of us watching this video. Not me, but you guys. I hope I don't be one, but, you know, trying here. Insulin resistance folks, right? Overweight people, they all have problems in their adiponectin, their leptin system. They have a lot of interleukin-6, TNF-alpha, all this junk, all this inflammation in their body. It seems highly probable that these compounds can actually influence the overall glucose homeostasis, you know, that's leading the insulin resistance to diabetes. So risk of vascular disease in type 2 diabetes like heart attacks and strokes are all due to that inflammation. But the curcumin as a dietary supplement has been demonstrated in a number of studies to result in improvements to both of the patient's cholesterol profile and their antioxidant capacities. Now this extends credibility to the idea that the curcumin have the potential to alter the cardiometabolic risk. As we have already talked about, curcumin has a wide range of therapeutic uses. However, it is hard to dissolve and broken down quickly, which makes it hard to absorb in the digestive tract and it's weakly bioavailable. Its bioavailability has been linked to the fact that it does not dissolve in water. <laughs> and it breaks down more in alkaline environments or crystallizes in the acidic ones. The pH has a big effect on how long it takes to break down. So at pH over 7, it breaks down in about 30 minutes. In acidic conditions, it breaks down much more slowly with less than 20% of the total curcumin broken down in one hour. When taken by mouth, the bioavailability of curcumin can be affected by things like lipids and proteins in the food. Most of it comes out in the feces, so only a small amount is absorbed by the intestine. Even so, the liver and plasma quickly breaks it down. A higher rate of conjugation through what we call glucuronidation and sulfation means that a lot of it is water-soluble metabolites such as sulfates and glucuronides are turned into sulfates and glucuronides and are immediately excreted in urine. This is why it is concentration in the blood is so low in most of the time when you take it as an additional supplement. The low bioavailability make the concentrations lower in the serum and that's why it is hard to make it a drug. It can be a drug actually. You know, if they studied, if they had a way of getting this absorbed better, 
But there are some actually pharmacological technologies, including us working on getting this working better. Some people use piperine or lecithin. They actually help the curcumin to be more soluble. That's why when you take advanced glucose support, you should take it with a meal that will help everything to be absorbed better, including the curcumin in our supplement. There are different ways of to deliver curcumin. It can be even given IV, which I don't recommend to anyone at this time. It's uh, experimental. It can be way more potent, of course, because bioavailability is a problem with this substance. Studies that looked into the safety of turmeric found that standardized powder or the extract of turmeric or curcumin are really safe for humans to use. Even at high doses of 6 gram per day for 7 weeks, they have been tested. The curcumin can also be given, like I said, IV. Of course, you have to be have a super low dose with the IV compared to the oral due to bioavailability issues. And definitely there's a lot more research to be done. Curcumin is non-toxic, non-mutogenic, non-carcinogenic, non-phototoxic. It is safe even when given intravenously to humans at lower doses. So again, I'm not here recommending you to go seek for IV curcumin treatment, but definitely if you're taking curcumin, take it with food. Take it actually it with some pepper and some spicy stuff may not be the worst idea unless you have already have reflux and you know acid reflux problems, then maybe you should avoid doing that. Well, anyways, we talked about curcumin today. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new today. And if you did, please make sure you share, you like this video, write a comment below. I want to hear from you. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, I hope you are enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.